Hello everybody, it's Jonathan Sunier Smoke from the Ring of Fire in Westchester County. I welcome you to another segment of Riding with Smoke, where you will join me in my voyage to work, where I riff on a certain topic related to our outdoor living business. In this case, I want to talk about something, um, what I deem to be the enemy of your grill or your outdoor kitchen, and that is wind. Um, the reason I'm going to discuss this is that it, it is an overlooked topic. It should be discussed. And um, we recently just finished a, a project where it reared its head. So let's get to it. The um, project in, uh, that I mentioned was in New York City. And it's on a roof deck. So a rooftop. So the customer bought the island, they bought the grill components, they got a 42 inch alfresco grill. And with that grill, they purchased a um, AWS 42, I believe is the model, it's, it's a wind guard. Most manufacturers um, offer these accessories and it's a piece of metal, it's kind of bent and it, it gets installed on the back of the grill. And what it does is, if there's a wind, a prevailing wind, that's coming from the back of the grill, what the thing does is it kind of makes the wind skip up so it doesn't get into the grill. So it's like a deflector, all right? And these are never discussed, never discussed. They're, they're, they're always overlooked. And they're incredibly important. They're incredibly important if you are in a situation where you are doing a kitchen that is on, say, um, an oceanfront property or... Um, you are like where, anywhere where there's going to be potential for pre prevailing wind, all right? So certainly oceanfront. I mean, we have in Westchester, the Long Island Sound, um, some of the towns over there, New Rochelle, Mamaroneck, Larchmont. This will come into play as well. Certainly in Connecticut, Greenwich, Westport, other places on the water. You have to consider these. They're also important in the... the um, the instance that I just mentioned, if it's going on a rooftop in New York City, don't even think about putting a grill on a uh, on a deck uh, on a patio uh, without having one of these things installed because it's just simply the higher up you go, it's windy. Now, why is this a problem? All right, I'm going to tell you a little story about a project that I was not involved with, but I I, I was told about uh, through one of my my contacts in the industry. And they, um, there was a, a DCS grill sold to a customer in the Hamptons. And they were having a big party um, on, a particular, uh, on a particular weekend. The grill was installed on a Friday, okay? Big party was on Saturday. And the way the grill was set up was that the back of the grill was facing the water, right? So you had winds coming off the water hitting the back of that grill. So again, brand new grill, a high-end grill, right, DCS. Wind, grill delivered on a Friday, party on a Saturday. Guess what happened? They didn't even get through the party before the grill completely burnt out. What happened was the wind was so significant that it kept on blowing into the back of the grill. And remember, there's openings back there so the grill can, how, how should I say this, exhale, right? A lot of the smoke comes out over there, heat, and the wind just kept on pushing everything back into the grill, but also pushed heat to the front of the grill's manifold. That is the brains of the grill. The knobs are there, the igniters, okay? All that heat and those DCS grills are hot. I think this may have even been before um, they changed the valves on them. And all that heat got pushed out to the front and the whole thing burnt out. They didn't even get through the party before the thing was shot, right? It didn't even last a day. And, um, uh, and that's a true story, okay? So, and I had, I had a project a couple of years ago in the Hamptons, and the guy bought two outdoor kitchens, all right? One was ocean facing, one was tucked in another side of the house. I said to him, we're not, we're not, we're not delivering anything out here until you get this wind guard for this piece. Because girls are simply not gonna last, right? So, 
And this is even, forget about outdoor kitchens. You could just buy a grill on a cart. It's gonna be the same thing. Uh, I had another guy that bought one and um, he didn't get the wind guard and he, oh gosh, where was this guy? He may have been like in Stanford, Connecticut. And again, wind's coming in. He's uh, he's having issues with uh, the flame. Uh, the the uh, flame's getting um, blown out. Um, he tried to reposition the grill and there was a problem that because he's on natural gas and the connection was uh, not allowing him to, to, to pivot the grill in the way that he wanted to, to get it out of the way of the wind. So there's all types of, for instances, that we have to warn you of. And, you know, rooftop, anything at a high elevation, um, you're on the water, whether it's a river, whether it's an ocean, any place where you're gonna get the prevailing wind, you have to get the wind guard. I can tell you right now, I know Alfresco, we just sold one, Alfresco has them, Lynx has them, DCS has them. Any of the better grill manufacturers are going to offer this to you, all right? So buy it. <clears throat> They're incredibly, incredibly important and um, they won't impede the, um, you know, the performance of the grill in any way, shape or form. It almost looks just like a bat wing on top of it. Um, I, they're highly recommended, okay? So, any questions about using wind guards? Do you need a wind guard? Hit us up, questions at rofgrills.com. We aim to please. Thank you.